This conference will now be recorded. Cool. So yesterday we discussed about uh, connection pools, the importance of connection pool, why we need connection pool for application, right? So if we don't have connection pool, we understand what are the problems uh, while connecting with database, right? While connecting with database, there will be multiple challenges, right? A lot of network traffic between our application and database. Between our application and database, there would be a lot of network traffic because for every time, for every operation, we need to open a connection and we need to close a connection along with our executing our statement. So when we have huge number of requests daily basis, right? For every request, it is going to open and close the connections. That is not the good practice. We should not open connection for each request, right? And when we have huge number of requests concurrently, when we have multiple concurrent requests, um, considering, uh, let's say, in a minute we have thousands requests, and if your application, if your application is having only one, um, only few uh, sockets, few connections. So 100 maximum connections I have here. So concurrently, only for 100 users, it can able to serve at a time. So if you don't have connection pools, uh, the remaining users, 10,000 users request at a time, right? 10,000 users request at a time. For past 100 users, it will do the connection. And for the remaining 900 users, it will throw the SQL exceptions by saying connection not available if you don't have connection pool. And the performance lag also you can see performance. So as every time it is opening connection and closing connection for every user request, right? It will take some uh, time to open the socket and to close the socket that we realized already, right? So instead of doing this open connection and close connection every time, what you need to do is while starting off application itself, you need to bring all your database connections. You need to bring all available database connections to your connection pool. So you need to keep them into a connection pool object. So whenever you want to do CRUD operations like save, update or delete operations, you need to get a connection from connection pool and you need to execute your required statement. Finally, you need to return connection to connection pool. Finally, you need to return connection to connection pool so that there won't be network traffic for each user. When as a user, you request from your, da your data from your form, right? So your request will come up to the CRUD operation method or either save or update, whatever the method is. So when you pass the data, immediately the save method will execute this statement by getting connection from connection pool. It will not even talk with the database to get the connection. It will get the connection from connection pool itself as this connection pool will be maintained from application side itself. Your application only will maintain this connection pool so that it will not take much time to give you connection to save method. And finally, once you're done, right, when you close it, instead of closing it on database, it will return back to connection pool itself. So, so that we can improve a lot of application performance not only that right when we have multiple concurrent users request right at a time consider you have one lakh request so for first 100 users it will give the connections remaining 99,900 users right it will make them wait in a queue instead of throwing exception so that for the first 100 users it will insert the data for the remaining users again it will give the connections once as soon as they return connection back to connection pool okay so any number of concurrent users can request your application if you can use the connection pool. If not, they will see the exceptions. Okay. So to implement the connection pool, sun given, I mean the Java given data source interface. There is a data source interface to create multiple connections. For single connection, we use a connection interface. Okay. For multiple connections, we use a data source. So data data source is having multiple vendors implemented like Apache given basic data source, C3P0 provider given combo pool data source, and application server providers given multiple data source implementation classes. Using any one of these class, you can able to create connection pool. These are simple POSO classes. Basic data source is a simple POSO, POSO class. This POSO class is having setter method, set driver, set URL, set username, set password. 
and how many maximum active connections you want and what is the maximum waiting period in milliseconds okay what is the maximum waiting period that i need to keep user wait if connection is not available all the properties we can set as we have the setter methods right we can call the setter methods from our xml file and we can pass driver name url username passwords required maximum connections and the waiting time then when user wants to use the connection when user wants to use the connection right from this basic data source there is a get connection method when they use it will give one connection from the pool and once you're done with your CRUD operation when you call connection close the same connection again will place it back into pool itself okay and we see the performance difference also here yeah a simple a simple way of connection creation a simple way of connection creation we are trying to loading the driver name giving the url username password we are trying to open 15 connections 50 connections right in a for loop we are trying to open you know, 50 connections so when you execute when you execute your for loop for loop will execute so fast so your connections your database is not able to provide that connections in in such a fast that by opening connection and closing connection only up to 18 connections it will serve thereafter 19 connections thereafter it is throwing socket refused you are seeing exceptions here so if you try to insert some data using this for loops if you try to compose some data and if you are doing multiple iterations and if you use the jdbc approach you will see errors because this is not that much fast to open connection and to close connection so instead of that what we need to use is you need to you need to use this basic data source and you can set all the properties driver name url username password with maximum active connections and waiting time and here you can open any number of connections 2000 uh, 2500 25000 connections i am trying to open in here now using connection pool concepts when i do that in a fraction of seconds 25000 connections will be opened and closed really internally it is not opening connection from database and closing it instead of that you know connection pool created the connection into pool right from pool only it is getting all these connections 25000 connections got from the pool only the same 15 connections only given in here as a 25000 connections okay so every time it is opening a connection and it is placing back again into here itself okay same thing you can configure from xml as well basic data source bean you can create and you can call all the setter methods set driver set url username password and all the properties and you can set the data and you can use wherever you want you can use that one wherever you want so the style is you need to get the data source into data source object and you can call once getting the connection you can do any thread operations here so this is what basically connection pool is now we will see jdbc okay so the basic thread operations we will see the basic thread operations we will see using connection pool okay a simple dao how to implement a dao using connection pool we will see a simple dao how to implement using connection pool yeah so here here i created the interface implementation model first i created a dao interface okay so this is how we follow uh, interface implementation models we follow okay i just created an interface with required methods save delete save method will take id name email address as a input and delete method will take id so that i can able to delete it and this is my implementation so student dao impl implementing from dao interface 
and here i need to implement these two methods one save method and one delete method i need to override my methods and this data i'm inserting it id name email data so how i am inserting by using data source by using connection pool i am opening a connection so this is the connection pool dependency i added here connection pool is dependency into my do class so using this data source connection pool i am trying to open in connection so that i'll get connection here using that connection you are creating a statement okay there is a table student 007 with id name email address i am going to insert data into that table so check whether you have this table or not usually select star or describe the table okay table not found let me create the table create table student 007 id number remaining name email address we have okay table created so this is my table structure table is having id name email so this id name email address i need to insert so here insert into student values using prepared statement i am trying to insert in data here you know how to use this prepared statement dot set into pass id into the first argument second argument third argument post argument finally when you call execute update it will insert all this data and we are trying to return connection to connection pool so using connection pool from connection pool getting the connection here getting the connection we are getting this connection from connection pool and finally finally when we call the connection dot close right it will return it will return connection to connection pool when we call connection dot close it will return your connection to connection pool same thing will happen when you call get connection every time it will give you connection from connection pool not from the database it will not give you from database instead it will give it from connection pool when you call close it will close the connection from the into i mean it will return connection to connection pool only and finally here i created my driver manager data source this is one data source given in spring okay spring also given this data source but it will not create multiple connections one single connection only it will create so use it use this basic data source or combo pool data source okay so use basic data source or combo pool data source i didn't added this combo pool data source here let me check that jar file let me use combo pool data source So find it not change it to basic data source change the properties to basic data source so this is how combo pool data source we need to configure for your reference i'll comment it and this is for driver manager data source driver manager data source we have from spring itself when you want one single connection only in the connection pool use this one okay 
and this is the basic data source one. Anyway, finally, I'm trying to inserting this basic data source here, basic data source into my DO implementation. And this is the interface. Data source is chilled for this data source only. You can inject into parent. You can inject into its parent. Okay. So the basic data source object, the basic data source object I'm injecting into data source. Now you can use this DAO implementation anywhere you want. So here is my client class. I have loaded application XML here and getting DAO object. Finally, using DAO object, I'm trying to inserting some data here. Okay. Finally, data inserted successfully. Can verify it. So the finally data inserted into database. So this is the basic JDBC style of implementation if you want to implement by using connection tools. So if you want to implement any DAO. First, create an interface, then provide the implementation and keep data source as a dependency here and create a data source object and inject that object here. So, this is pure XML approach. You know how to deal this with annotations also. If you have annotations, you need to do this connection pool configuration into a configuration class. We know, right, there are multiple annotations, controller, service, right? So the same thing we can do with annotations as well. This you need to do in configuration class, a pure programmatic approach. Okay, pure programmatic approach using annotations. We can do the same thing using configuration annotation. Okay, yeah. So this is how you can inject connection pool here and you can use it. Now, instead of using plain JDBC here, as we are using plain JDBC, see how many statements we are writing here. Opening connection, then creating statement, setting properties, at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to eight, nine lines of coding we are writing, this much code. And always the structure will not change, right? The same style we follow. The same style we follow, either it is a student table, employee table, or whatever it is. So when you have this similar logic repeatedly, when you have this kind of similar logic repeatedly, what you can do instead of instead of writing this many statements or this many lines, you can have a some helper class or a template class. You can create a template design pattern, right? So you can you can add all this stuff in the in that template, and you can call your template methods. Your template should be able to do this repeated operations whatever we are doing right dynamically should be able to handle them so for the same thing for the same thing right from spring they given jdbc template class they given one jdbc template class for doing these operations for doing crud operations they given one jdbc template class they have given from spring one jdbc template so instead of doing crud operations using Plain JDBC style. If you can inject the JDBC template into your class, JDBC template. If you inject into your class using JDBC template, it is easy to execute database operations. What you need to do, if you take JDBC template as a dependency into your DAO class, right, for doing CRUD operations. If you take JDBC template as a dependency into your DAO class. Either you need to auto wire it or else you need to have a setter here. You need to have a setter here or else you need to auto wire JDBC template. Fine. This JDBC template also is having one dependency. Into JDBC template, you need to pass data source, connection pool object, whatever connection pool you create, right? Basic data source or combo pool data source, whatever object is, whatever object it is. 
so this object first you need to inject it into jdbc template so jdbc template will take connection pool object you know usually connection pool will have lot many connections here so during runtime right your jdbc template will use connections from connection pool only so when you have a save method here prod operation method with so and so number of properties property one two three to save these properties to save these properties you can use jdbc template instead of opening connection and closing connections right repeatedly writing that same logic and again and again use this jdbc template dot there are multiple methods to execute your sql operation ddl operation either it's a table create operation or insert operation or delete operation or update operation we have multiple methods here like execute execute query execute query execute update and execute method also we have execute update we use generally for dml operations mostly we do dml operations right insert update delete so by using this execute update you can pass your data here and the arguments also we can give directly here data with arguments that's it in a single line statement you can able to execute your jdbc way of execution one single line would be enough for your data in session that simple jdbc template is you really need not to worry about did i open connection properly did i close the connection properly did i close the statement resources and all the problem is in jdbc you know the problem in jdbc you should be little careful to close the connection and to close the statements and all see i forget to close the statement but you should do that so whatever resources you open you need to close them so if i open connection i need to call close i should not forget otherwise you know that connection will be utilized for long time for the single save method only it will not return it back to connection pool okay so you really should focus on closing the resources see even we didn't have this prepared statement dot close ps dot close also we should have we need to close the resource otherwise that resource will be occupied for us until garbage collection is happening okay so you better instead of using this way of style if you go with the jdbc template right jdbc template internally it will take care of internally when you call this execute method what it will do it will open a connection jdbc execute update statement open connection from pool open connection from connection pool execute it will execute your query and finally it will close connection closing means it will return connection to connection pool return connection to connection pool all these operations internally it will have you need not to worry about them just you need to pass your dml query with arguments that's it that much easy using jdbc templates so let us do that jdbc template example here so the example number is 41 using jdbc template how to do prod operations check the libraries are properly added yes yeah so here i have dao and uh, this is my business and this is controller i implemented a fully use case so start with the dao so here i have dao implementation from this interface okay i have a created interface first with the save update delete find by primary key by using id find by object find by not find by object it will return data into object okay so yeah and find all method so i want to implement this many crowd operations save update delete select 
data into map object select the data into student object or find all objects from my table okay so the implementation given here student dao impl so you need to provide implementation to all your methods save method update method delete method and find methods and all so what i'm doing here first in my implementation i have a dependency of jdbc template and i'm injecting it using setter method I have a JDBC template dependency and I'm injecting it here and using this template only I'm doing my execute operations yeah there is a exit instead of execute update there is update method okay this is like execute update only JDBC template dot update you need to pass your SQL query here DS student spring let's check do you have this table or not so let's start from student yeah we have this table already we have this table already let us truncate truncate table okay data deleted now we don't have any data okay so we are trying to inserting data into this table using jdbc template see we are not opening any connection and we are not closing any connection we are not creating statement closing statement all the best practices they used internally you need not to worry about that infrastructure operations like open close we really need not to worry about them internally the update method will take care so just you need to create your query and this arguments right first i want to insert id then name email address this is the order so whatever order you are following here for name email address right in the same order you need to pass your arguments here so arguments i created a array of arguments here and in same order i am supplying the data name email address here id name email address the same arguments i have given internally what it is doing from this zeroth index it will get the value and it will substitute here and name value email value address value using prepared statement might it will set the values internal same thing with update method update student set name email address and where id equal to so and so here also you need to follow the order first argument should be name the next email the next address the next id so you can see first passing name the next email address finally id the same order you need to follow if you miss the order you will see the errors so here you should be little careful while using jdbc template you should follow the order in whatever order you have the placeholders right in the same order you need to pass your arguments also same thing with the delete delete student where id equal to argument only one argument i need find by primary key so here we have jdbc template dot query for map query for map will do what it will return records from your table with column name and value so we have column names id name email address right those are the column names it will use in this map key column names as keys and it will return values it will return value of id name email address into this map object so finally i get one record here okay for one single record we use this map not for multiple so when you have only one record for that particular id you can go with map when you have multiple records if you want to fetch you can use query per list so select the start from table it will return a lot of records and in case if you want to get the data instead of getting into the map if you want to get the data into directly your object so you can use query for object method you need to give your query here along with a mapper generally you know right when we use jdbc when we deselect the operation it will give result set so from that result set to, to student object it will convert result set to, to student object by using this mapper class you need to implement a mapper class using row mapper implementation row mapper is an interface in that row mapper interface they given map row method basically it will give get the result set input here so from this result set you need to get the data you know right how to deal with result set so you need to get the data from result set and you need to pass the data into your object finally you need to return your object here 
so when we implement this row mapper right during this implementation if you pass that row mapper internally the template class query for object method will map results from your result set to your object finally it will give you object so seamlessly you can see the mapping from result set to object here using this query for object method using row mapper now i am using this dao implementation into my this business implementation class student bo student service class implementation i have so into this student class i need a do class object instead of inject do implementation i am injecting i am using here interface as a dependency through interface i can able to inject it so this is the best approach or better approach to achieve the inversion of controlling if this is not discussed we will discuss it okay why we need to use interfaces instead of implementations okay it's a lengthy topic we'll discuss now here the business methods i have join student updates existing student delete student get student get all students and here this service need to call my do class method so as i'm injecting do here using the do save method for joining student for updating student i'm calling update and the subsequent method for delete delete for find find for find all find all find by object find by object we have so finally i am using this do into my controller class here is my controller class this is not a real controller we just we are just using our ioc here to get the object and trying to inserting data okay consider it as a standalone controller i am using a scanner to read the data if user enter one that that i am considering it as safe and reading arguments from the user name email address data and finally calling my business class join student method internally that will call your dao do will do the save operation okay a console based application if you consider this is console based application we need to give commands through here so one for save enter id it is asking to enter id enter name enter email enter address finally insertion success go and verify the data the data gets inserted so here we used the jdbc template for doing all these CRUD operations in a simple statement in a simple single line statements we are able to achieving we are able to achieving database i mean a jdbc kind of style here but you really need not to worry about closing resources and all the advantage is here you really need not to worry about open connection close connections open statement close statements kind of thing okay that stuff template will take care just you focus on your query and the data that's it still here we have the problem as we are using placeholders compulsory we are following the order while inserting it so for this reason they given one more class named parameter jdbc template okay named parameter jdbc template class given so if you go with this named parameter jdbc template class you even not really worry about the order also so 42 example 42 named parameter jdbc template for the same implementation if you go through dao so in dao class i'm using named parameter jdbc template so this is a little advanced jdbc template for doing crud operations so while using this named jdbc template see for doing insert operations we are calling again template dot update method only calling insert into ds student instead of using the question mark symbols what i'm using here id name email address i'm using instead of using the question marks i'm using my column names here name email address and these are the placeholders into this id into this id column this is the value into this name column this is the value named parameters into this email 
this is the placeholder into this address this is the placeholder using this placeholders now you can pass the values id placeholder value name value email value address value how to pass use a map object create a map and keep your id this name right whatever names you have here put that names here and the respective values name and respective values so when it is a map right you need not to ensure the order map even it will not maintain any order it will maintain key values only so finally you can pass the map object here finally you can pass the map object as a argument here so finally you need to pass map as a argument here so map argument you need to pass here that's it from this map right it will collect each value id name email address values and it will pass so in this scenario you need not to worry about ordering you need to you need not to worrying about ordering you can put in any order your id name email address values you need not to ensure the order okay that is the only difference instead of passing arguments through object array i'm passing all the arguments through map object so you need not to ensure the order here so the jdbc template also will works the same like jdbc template only. named parameter jdbc template works similar like jdbc template only. so insert one more record here So in session success, now we used named parameter template for this in session. Okay, so this data also gets inserted. Okay, yeah. So these are the two approaches we have for JDBC style. If you want to use JDBC style while using Spring, don't use plain core JDBC. Instead of that, go with this named parameter JDBC template. Okay. In interviews, you might have these questions, right? How you can ensure or what design patterns you have used uh, throughout your applications. So you can say, I used template design pattern. This is the template design pattern. So what is the benefit of this template design patterns is they will have some reusable code they will have some reusable code free implementations they will have so that you need not to worry about the repeated code which we are doing every day in our life okay and not only that right this jdbc template as an example consider you are a lead you are a lead or you are a architect for your application to make sure that whoever used this class right to make sure that whoever used this class they i mean you need not to worry about resources internally they are closing or they are opening so if they are not so skilled or though they are skilled if we consider that there is a chance that resource leakage might happen right so to avoid that if you can able to create a template kind of pattern and if you if you if you give that class to your team if they try to use it right so this template will make sure that internally it will open the connections and it will close the connections it will open the statements and it will close the statements whatever best practices you have that all practices we can implement on this template methods okay so these template methods are reusable methods and inside these templates we have some reusable code like open connection closing connections open statement and close statements as a developer we need not to worry about that statements in our code okay are we clear oh, yes sir okay so yeah that's all i thought to discuss today tomorrow what we will do is i'll give two sessions on hibernate okay i'll give two sessions on hibernate once done with that hibernate sessions i'll show you all the hibernate examples 
without hibernate also we can proceed but you know if we don't have hibernate knowledge how internally it works uh, it's better to attend that two sessions okay so do you want me to go with that or directly shall i go it into spring into spring with war and strike no please take care hibernate also okay so i'll give uh, two sessions hibernate like uh, in hibernate how to do all the crud operations and how to do mappings right a quick uh, two sessions i'll take thereafter we will go with uh, spring integration okay till here you are fine right you understand right how to deal with jdbc and connection pools yeah so get the downloads from here and do practice uh, all these examples are available here your connection pool examples also you have so today we discussed this 40 and 41 42 download and uh, do a practice okay so i'll attach hibernate example separately i'll create one more link for tomorrow's sessions and i'll make it available there hibernate jars and hibernate uh, examples also okay but for jdbc only these two classes are important uh, i mean name or parameter yeah this is name one is jdbc template. template and one is named parameter jdbc template yeah these two are the important okay, okay. and one more thing in this class we are told like wrap or something in the la like the last property then uh, yeah we... that is mapper mapper yeah do you have doubt here mapper yeah see um in general if i ask you to give me data after your select operation give me data into a bean class what you will do you will fetch the data from the result set and you will store it into bean class right yes, sir. yeah same thing we are doing here so we need to implement a mapper class just we need to create a mapper class this we need to implement okay create a mapper class here just this mapper class duty is result set data need to map it into your custom bean class okay so consider that you are getting data here consider that you are getting data into this result set read the data from result set here your id name email address data and pass this data into your bean class and return it and where you need to configure this this mapper right during select operation particularly this particularly this query for object method in query for object method you need to have a query here select query you know that this will return you data one record it will return you. okay one record it will return you but that record instead of getting as a result set i want to get that data into student object so whatever mapper you implemented that mapper you need to pass here so that what will happen query for object internally it will supply result set object here into the student mapper and whatever student mapper return value we have read that return value it will return to us internally the result set data will be fetched and it will map to your student object here we are doing that data it will return you back here okay so this is just our own class uh, this is our not class only. yeah yeah you need to implement it okay because this customer is just a naming convention yeah yeah so okay. yeah mapper is it yes you need to implement it from the row mapper so that you need to implement it name it anything okay, okay. yeah okay sir. yeah just go through these examples okay quickly and you do let me know after tomorrow's session if you have any doubts we'll discuss okay So tomorrow we'll have fiber net session okay two sessions i'll take not more than that uh, i'll quickly give you how to do mappings and all and the next we can come back to spring again okay uh yeah that's all i'm done for today tomorrow we'll connect same time okay 8 30.
sign so yeah so this link you want yesterday already shared yeah okay so this is the link are you able to access the link yeah no. fine okay so yeah that's all yeah thanks all good day Thank you, sir.